Hello everyone, I am Rajesh Sen Gupta and we are talking about um, the, the painter, this prolific painter Raja Ravi Verma and his contributions. So as I have mentioned that I mean he is one, uh, he is this painter who had excelled the skill of making portraits and also model studies and he had not only just used the models for um, you know depicting certain domestic scenes or just um, you know uh, for, for uh, different kind of like moods but he had also used models for uh, you know recreating certain kind of uh, mythological scenes and scenes from the Hindu epics and so on. So here there is this image of goddess Saraswati and even though like I mean we see a cropped image of that but it is not really a cropped image. I mean we already discussed the use of cropped images in Raja Ravi Verma's work but this image is not specifically cropped image but for the quality of the image I preferred this particular image here. So what happens in this we find that I mean there are models and Ravi Verma had used models for uh, you know and, and made them sit in this particular posture so that I mean he can uh, paint images of the Hindu gods and goddesses. So this particular image of Saraswati that we find and she, she is placed in this uh, you know in this natural setting she, she uh, sits on this piece of rock and then there is a um, you know the, there is a peacock who, which sort of like I mean looks towards the goddess and then in the background we find this lake where there are lilies and lotuses and then there is also uh, this this large tree in the background which sort of gives a background uh, when which which sort of like I mean you know um, helps emphasizing the figure of Saraswati in the foreground. Now what else we see in this image that there are particular re references to um, you know the, the costume and the jewelry in part of Maharashtra and, and southern India and those would make um, you know repeated appearances in, in uh, Ravi Verma's paintings. So for example this is another image and as I have already mentioned that how there are those mythological scenes. So in Ravi Verma he not only just painted the, the portraits or um, you know like I mean the, the small scale uh, images uh, but I mean he had also painted this large narrative scenes in which we see that some of the most dramatic uh, events of the Hindu epics for example from Ramayana and Mahabharata had unfolded. So this is an image this is the Sita's Bhumi Pravesh and in this one we see uh, that uh, how there is this um, you know this prominent figure of uh, Rama who is seated on this royal throne and he has this expression of bewilderment in his eyes and his right hand is also like I mean uh, gestured in a way that I mean there is an unfinished uh, conversation that is uh, there. And then what else we see that there is the figure of uh, Devi Sita and she is um, you know she, she gazes at Rama and then like I mean part of her sari the pallu of her sari sort of like I mean flows in a gesture that she is in a motion to go inside the earth and already like the earth goddess she is shown here she sort of like I mean lovingly embraces Sita and she sort of like I mean takes Sita to the earth like I mean the earth has split open and then Sita had desired to like I mean go inside the earth. So that is the moment when, when we see that I mean all, all these events are uh, unfolding. So right beside that right beside Rama we also see their twin sons that is Lava and Kusha and then there are these two figures 
they are almost in the darkness and they, they also have this expression of bewilderment in their eyes, astonishment in their eyes and um, you know in, in their physical expression that, that uh, how did this miracle happen and this is something that was not really expected or desired but it eventually happened. And in the background we see this other figure who is in this pensive mood perhaps Lakshmana and who, who mourns uh, Sita's Bhumi Pravesha. So this is, this is all we see there and then uh, here also we see that how there is this big pillar and that sort of like I mean and then there is this um, you know it, it, it's a fence or part of a balcony through which like I mean the rest of the palace complex is seen and which is you know an imaginary reconstruction of the palace of Ayodhya. So if these are the things that we find there that some of those European customs of using a thick column and then having a window to the uh, exterior world that is shown and then all the other things those are also unfolding here we see that I mean it is not just a single uh, source of light that is used but it is almost like a very strategic and dramatic light that is uh, you know like I mean that just highlights the images of Rama and Sita and so this is something that we cannot really just claim to have its root in the European um, you know like I mean the, the custom of showing the single direction of light but this perhaps also comes from the theatrical uh, um, performances and the use of uh, this, this highlights in, in the theatrical performances in the stage settings. So, Raja Ravi Varma as we all also know that I mean in, in Maharashtra he had uh, worked in Bombay he worked very closely with the uh, with the theatre performances and from there we see that I mean this this stage like setting and at the same time um, you know so, some of some of those um, theatrical gestures, postures, expressions they also come very prominently in, in Ravi Varma's images. So and then also like I mean the character of the light as well here we see that how the character of the light is also something that is uh, beyond the natural um, you know like the setting it is it is much more theatrical than uh, you know the way we would see the sunlight falling on these figures so these are some of the ways in which we find that how uh, there are those different kind of uh, visual and audio visual references uh, those, those those appear in Ravi Verma's work and then like the theatricality so the in the theater performance the theater performance is something where visuality and then audio and then like the movement of the body everything come together to to sort of like I mean bring life to those performances whereas in a painting we do not really have the audio components we do not really have the direct movement of the body but what happens in that is that I mean all those components the audio component and then like I mean you know the this this high degree of dynamism all those things are expressed through the visuals and that is the reason we find that certain decisions are being made certain strategies are being taken and but those strategies are also playful it does not really look like that there is an imposition of those theatrical quality in this image but they merge seamlessly with the theme and they contribute largely to to creating a mood of uh, you know like I mean of, of this particular episode. So, these are some of the things that we find that uh, how Ra Ravi Verma had excelled not only um, you know like I mean not only the, the European customs or like I mean interpreting this mythological uh, the Hindu mythological themes but also had thought through the importance of different media and then how to bring the essence of performance into the uh, you know into the into the still surface of painting so th those those are some of the experiments that we find in ravi verma's work which also add to uh, you know the, the complexity of his process at the same time the complexity of his thought process 
Now, another thing that we find in Ravi Verma's images is that many of his uh, celebrated paintings, like I mean the, the images which were initially made as paintings for patrons and patrons uh, all across um, the Indian subcontinent and then um, not necessarily just the Hindu epics, but sometimes from the um, you know from the uh, epic poems and then also from the uh, literary works of Kalidasa and so on. So, those kind of works we also find that I mean when he painted them initially, then those paintings were, uh, they, they gained such popularity that after a point that Ravi Verma uh, decided to, to make reproduction of those paintings in this very specific uh, lithographic technique which is called oleograph. So, we have already seen that how oleograph had was functioning in the uh, mid and uh, late 19th century. So, many of the uh, lithographic presses for example, um, you know the Calcutta art studio, Shorbagan art studio in Calcutta, then the Chitrashala studio in Pune. So, all those studios had uh, you know shown the possibility of, of the lithographic prints and the way in which like different kind of this, this shading, use of half tone and all those things can uh, be implemented in lithograph in the printing technique which is not always possible in etching or in the relief printing techniques. So, that was something that was picked up by Ravi Verma and eventually we see the establishment of the Ravi Verma press. And then there we find that this, this chromolithograph prints were produced and since lithograph gives the uh, you know uh, the kind of the modulation, the kind of this the smudging effect and different kind of like I mean the light and shade everything all those things uh, lithograph allows the um, you know uh, lithograph allows the artist to, to experiment with all those different characters. And that is the reason Ravi Verma found that to be uh, very close to the expression of oil painting. And that is the reason we find that how the, uh, you know, the Ravi Verma press had managed to make all these highly complicated, technically highly complicated lithographic prints with multiple colors like the ones we have on screen. And then after those prints were uh, made, then we find that those were actually uh, put a film of oil of linseed oil was actually placed on the top of each print. So, this this filming was um, I mean you know this this oil filming that 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 particular process is something that is known as oleograph where this oil film was placed on the top of this um, you know on, on the top of this print, but it is not just simply placing oil on the top of the print because that will make the print uh, soaked and it will uh, deteriorate the print. So, that is a particular mode in which like I mean this oil film thing was placed on, on, on this prints and that that happened in Germany. So, it is uh, you know like I mean assume that how uh, the prints were made in India and then they were sent to Germany for the this, this oil filming at least in the initial stage and then they were sent back to India. Now, for this oil film on, on the top of the prints they had this uh, luster and there is a reason like I mean the shine of the oil painting that, that, that would have there in this oleograph prints as well. And that is the reason this, this particular uh, I mean of course, that is the reason they are called oleograph, but that is also the reason why it gained a new kind of clientele. The people who would not be able to acquire oil paintings, they would not be able to the people who cannot afford oil paintings for their high price, they can afford to have this oleograph prints at their home and at, at a much lesser price. And so, that is how like I mean the distribution of the Ravi Verma prints uh, was, was um, you know across the Indian subcontinent. So, this was something that was happening and we also find that I mean Ravi Verma's uh, you know this, this mythological scenes, this highly uh, dramatic and narrative 
mythological scenes. So for example, this one that we have in the right side of the screen, that is, it's an episode from Mahabharata where Krishna played the envoy and then he, he made an effort to stop the war, which did not happen eventually. So this is this particular episode from Mahabharata that we see here. And um, here what happens is that um, this kind of the setting and then uh, you know like the, the all the figures who are modeled after the real human beings and then uh, all the other details details of the fabric textile architecture and everything they make this particular scenes believable and then when they were reproduced by the Raja Rit uh, Ravi Verma press then reproduced in numbers and then they were distributed all across. So that is how we find that uh, you know this, this images played a huge role in popularizing the Hindu mythological tales. And that is also something that we would find that how this Ravi Verma prints would be used for different kind of different advertisements and in the calendars the way we also see the calendar prints today. So just a clarification that I mean not just Ravi Verma's prints which were the mythological prints which were used for um, um, you know the advertisements as well as um, you know for calendars. So we, we also have prints from like Calcutta Art Studio from Chitrashala Studio those were also used for similar purposes. However, the dedication in making this, constructing these scenes by Ravi Verma, that was something that made his images very different from the other lithographic images, the chromolithographic images which were available in the market. And that is the reason we also find that why Ravi Verma's images uh, demand, uh, you know, like I mean, uh, a different kind of attention for understanding them and their impact, their long standing impact on the Indian visual culture. So from Ravi Verma as I have already mentioned that in the later half of the 19th century we already find the use of photography and the use of photography is also something that we can consider as part of this new colonial media. I mean this is something that is definitely not part of the painting technique. but we can see this that I mean how this uh, the, the use of photography also transformed the visual culture during this particular time. So in uh, photography we find that the early photographic experiments those took place in, in 1830s, in 1840s, in, in, in France and part of Western Europe and then slowly it became much more uh, established. Uh, uh, practice for for uh, documentation. So it started with like I mean the uh, uh, photographing practices in the studio or in the indoor setup, and then we see that I mean how uh, the the portable uh, you know the photographic unit those that came into existence, and then people can carry the entire photographic unit to different sites, and that is how like I mean the documentation of different. Um, architectural site and then like I mean the natural uh, sites and then like people, community and all those different kind of things, those started taking place in the late 19th century. So with that we also find that uh, uh, you know in the, in the later half of 19th century, in the second half of 19th century photography had also arrived in the Indian subcontinent and some of the uh, European photographers like Beto and all they have uh, uh, traveled across the subcontinent and they have photographed various sites. So uh, in that line we find that in the 1860s and more in the 1870s this one particular uh, person Lala Deen Dayal who was born into this Jain family near Mirat in Uttar Pradesh. So he, um, uh, he, he became one of the most important photographers in the history of Indian visual culture in 19th century. So what we find there is that in the, uh, um, you know, in the, in the 1870s, 
we find that he was uh, he started practicing with the with the technique of uh, making photographs and initially he was operating from indoor and then within a year or so of him taking a photograph he got the opportunity to travel with the colonial administrators and the rulers for, uh, across the subcontinent and during that time uh, he had documented the, the, their arrival in different places but also with time he had excelled his um, you know his his technique and then what we find that afterward he had established his own studio in Indore, his own photographic studio in Indore. And then in the 1880s, in the 1890s, around that time, we find that he had also traveled to many other um, parts of the Indian subcontinent and several princely states. So then perhaps like I mean we can uh, perhaps the most important one was um, um, the state of Hyderabad and so um, but anyways I mean we will we'll come to Hyderabad but before that I mean here is this one image and this this perhaps comes from 1870s in the early stage of his photographs and here we find that uh, Tukoji Rao Holkar the second so he uh, you know like I mean he is the Maharaja of Indore so as I have mentioned that he had his photographic studio in Indore so we we see that I mean how um, you know the, this 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 portrait painting tradition that was now slowly being replaced by photography. So photography is something for which like I mean the ruler would have to sit there only once instead of like I mean giving the artist sitting for like multiple times. But we see that I mean how the uh, you know this, this particular um, um, you know like the, the arrangement, the pictorial arrangement that still sort of uh, carries the, uh, the references of the oil painting tradition. So for example, if we see this ruler who is seated in the center of this image in his royal attire, then there is a table which also sort of like I mean you know it blocks the viewer's gaze, something that we have already seen like the table or a column would do that in the oil paintings and then behind him we have this attendant figure who's in the gesture of like I mean you know using a fly whisk to fan the king. So this is this is also a marker of his royalty that he is wealthy enough to have uh, multiple attendants and they would serve different purposes for him. So these are some of the things we find that how uh, you know like I mean instead of having a pillar uh, this this attendant figure who is clad in this dark costume almost serves the purpose of this pillar to sort of block the viewers gaze and also like direct the viewers attention to this central figure. Now some of the other things we also find in this photograph is that they are not looking directly at the viewers. So in photograph since there is this tendency of capturing a moment so there were like different kind of experiments that in some photographs we find that people would look directly in the eyes of the viewers and uh, in other photographs like this one we find that they are almost caught in this action where they are gazing at something else or they are almost in the uh, day to day action and then like the photographer had casually captured it. I mean of course it is not a casual cap capture, this is a um, well planned uh, photographic arrangement but like I mean this, this uh, particular way in which the eyes of the, of the sitter. Um, you know like the royalty that, that gazes towards this direction and then this person looks downward and also not really in a, in a gesture of being like I mean just, just in attention in, 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 the, in the straightforward like strictly vertical fashion. So those things add to uh, a sense of movement and um, you know uh, it is almost like how they, these two figures are caught into um, you know um, in, in their day to day activity and the photographer has just captured it. So it brings this immediacy to the viewers. So the kind of uh, you know the, the constructed reality that, that the oil paintings had 
for their 3D modulation, also for their lifelike quality. And in the photographs, what we find that I mean this this particular lifelike quality is is enhanced. And then this immediacy to these sitters between the you know between the sitter and the viewer was also established in this uh, images. Now, as I have already mentioned that I mean perhaps uh, Raja Dindal or like I mean you know he was given the uh, this title of Raja by by then um, you know like I mean so when when we see that I mean his career and perhaps one of the most important phase of his career was in uh, the late 1880s and and uh, 1890s when he served for uh, when he served for the nizam of hyderabad and so what we find that he had uh, not only just captured various court activities but he had also captured different sites in the city of hyderabad a different part of the state of hyderabad so some of the archaeological sites some of the historical sites so there are uh, so he had captured portraits architecture uh, court events, political events and so on. So, that way we find that there is this extensive range he had covered through his photographs and um, of course, like I mean the framing and uh, you know positioning of, of the people with the and their relationship to the architecture and everything, all those things are carefully constructed and that is the reason what we find that I mean um, Raja uh, uh, Deen Dayal was a person who had the technical mastery at the same time uh, he was also a person who had excelled the skill of um, you know composing the picture and arranging the different elements in the picture to have the most efficient view of them. So, with that when we try to conclude this session I just uh, you know point to certain um, you know aspects of it. So, if we see that I mean the arrival of the new media during the colonial time period we see how watercolor is one of the uh, uh, tool for uh, which was used for documentation that can be the botanical documentation that can be documentation of the people that can be documentation of the site and how that also uh, emphasized this eyewitness like I mean this evidence like uh, quality in them. And then when we move towards uh, the use of oil painting and then how oil painting was used primarily by the European painters for making portraits like for example, uh, this portrait by Tilly Kettle and then also some of the important political encounters or some of the sites which uh, you know of the landscape and so on those those are also part of their their expression so those were employed uh, in this in this images for documentation as well as recording this 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 sites and to make them close to the reality and then we have also looked into that how this expression of oil painting uh, and then like the uh, European anatomy, the use of light and then the distance, perspectival view and all those different things, those were uh, learnt and sort of internalized by artists like Ravi Verma, Raja Ravi Verma and then he had also imbibed certain theatricality into those images and by all those things he had also uh, you know he had he had implemented this knowledge into uh, representing uh, the hindu mythological themes among many other themes which were uh, you know pioneering uh, and and that that also showed uh, a new direction for the indian artist to function in in the uh, you know in the in the in the art market as well as he had also popularized the way uh, you know the the images of the gods they would stay in the indian homes not only during his time but many uh, you know uh, in in the next century and so on so uh, with that we would conclude the session thank you